The Seven Tsuburi by Morihiro Saito Sensei has become one of the most recognized set of exercises with Aikiken in the world. These Aikiken movements are practiced in many schools of Aikido, even in those which are not actually related to the Iwama school by Morihiro Saito Sensei. At this point, I feel my students require understanding of how what I teach is related to the well-recognized forms of Aikiken movements. Well, I cannot give my answer other than by making comments on Saito's Suburi teaching. So, Suburi are the bricks of what you do in Kumitachi, uh, not only technically, but also conceptually. People usually see only movements. They try to memorize and reproduce such movements in detail. Well, I decided to prepare this video to clarify the meaning of the seven Suburi. I will try to make it more perceivable for the modern people. I believe this is how I can make my contribution to the message of Aikido values. Uh, because I see, I observe how the chase for something external, like movements, actually destroys the essence of the practice. Movements are dead by themselves. By themselves, movements do not function as a vehicle. So, in this video, I will comment on the principles and concepts rather than movements standing behind the Aikiken Tsuburi designed by Morihiro Saito Sensei. Morihiro Saito positions his Aikiken in Sega. He believes this is the position you decide to start Kumitachi. The first Tsuburi also describes the range of movement, which is from Sega to Jordan and from Jordan to Sega. It means you do not lower your Aikiken down to get in position with Shaman Strike, for instance like it may be practiced with katana in some sword schools. Your cutting movement starts and stops at the second position. In the second suburi, Saito Sensei obtains the standard Jordan position to perform the shomen uchi strike. You can notice that in the first suburi it was not a standard Jordan position. It was rather Hidari Jodan with a cross stance where the right foot was positioned in front. Now it is the standard Jodan position with the left foot in front with the full hip movement potential. It means a more powerful strike with a step forward, Chi. But more importantly, it means you must also use the potential to obtain a sided position towards your opponent to avoid the mutual kill. Saito Sensei emphasizes it to be a characteristic of Aikido. It is important to understand because in sportive situations, mutual kill may not be a concern. The first strike or even touch is something that matters. Do you know how Shinai, the Kendo bamboo training sword, is designed? Have you ever seen any fencing tournaments? Both competing sportsmen kill each other and what matters is who did it first. So, it is important to know what you are actually learning. The avoidance of mutual kill is the principle of the Aikiken practice, emphasizes Saito Sensei. This Tsuburi starts from the standard Waki position, 
Saito-sensei emphasizes the importance of the way you obtain wacky position. Your Aikiken must travel over your head and then down to wacky position. This movement is almost ritual, symbolizing connection with upper mind or the universal key. He mentions inhaling key, as said Morihei Ueshiba. Breathing is related with key, but of course, you cannot inhale key. It means your intentions are synchronized with upper will, and you, like, accept the way written in Taijitsu, the destiny. Taijitsu has another meaning, which is universal key, rather than just techniques. For Morihei Ushibo, every action is a ritual of compliance with the universal key, the upper mind. And evidently, Morihiro Saito decided to incorporate such spiritual aspect into his system of Aikiken movements. Therefore, the way of the Aikiken is over your head, which also harmonizes the composition of your body, heavy hips, relaxed shoulders, built correct kamae. This principle is also in your Shumanuchi movement. And finally, you stop your striking action in your Seigan position. You have to notice here that from the sword fencing perspective, leading over one's head is not obligatory, sometimes even not possible. For example, samurais wore helmets and it was not possible to perform such movements. Their cutting movements went from the shoulders. But in Aikido, samurai skills are not that concern. Compliance with the upper will dictates the actions. The upper will or universal key makes everything optimized and perfect. It is difficult though to understand for non-practitioners. Also, do not forget that the principles we learned from the previous Suburi accumulate. It's like the law. Every principle is always in power. For example, in the final position of Seigan, in the third Suburi, you must comply with the principle of mutual kill avoidance you learned in the second Suburi. <laughs> We do not make distinction between left and right, says Morihiro Saito. Regardless of what side it is, your right can must be connected to your body and function as a single unit. It should be emphasized because in some schools of thought crowd, sides matter. Each side may have its own functionality. It's like the right side should be used for this purpose and the left side is only for that purpose. In Aikido, each side may have the same functionality. However, it doesn't mean we do not recognize left or right positions, Miki and Hidari Hanmi. It is important to understand. So, you can turn any of your side towards Uke as appropriate in your Kumitachi practice as long as your Aikiken stays in the plane of your center.
The shield and strike movements, the most often used in Kumitachi. From Seigan, you perform the shielding movement and then Shomenuchi. We end up in Hidari Seigan cross hand position and start the same procedure again. In Kumitachi practice, you adjust right or left sides as appropriate to shield yourself and perform the following Shobanuchi counter strike. The sixth suburi is about how you add tsuki into the mix of your shield and strike movements. This is an additional offensive element which is aimed to end the sequence of kumitachi. Be always ready to reach your target. You end in the migi or hidari chudan positions. Now that we know the 6th Tsuburi can be used against us, the 7th Tsuburi stands as a counter movement aimed to parry the offensive thrust. When our opponent blocks or parries our Aikiken, you must always be ready to apply this counter. This is a technical principle you should be always ready to apply. <laughs> In order to understand the seven Suburi better, you need to consider historical and cultural aspects of the times Saito Sensei lived in. When learning the principles, we also need to understand what is new, different, and what is being avoided with the offered approach in relation to the established traditions of those times. Also, I think many practitioners need a deeper understanding of what Saito actually offers further in Kumitachi based on his Suburi. For example, he starts Kumitachi from Seigan. His first Suburi begins from so-called decisive movement, which is an offensive movement, and then immediately transforms into a defensive movement as soon as the opponent reacts. It happens in the first Kumitachi. The Kumitachi I teach starts differently, not from second position, but from Gedan position, the same as the techniques I teach without Aikiken. I believe in the concept of invitation, which I explain in detail in BPM lesson 6, the Gedana Seigan concept. In Kumitachi, I do the emphasis on the bricks of influence and reaction. 
it is always Uke and Nage. Uke is the one who influences and Nage is the one who reacts. I believe the goal of Aikido practice is to learn our new reaction and this new reaction is not deception. Also, as to the inhaling key concept and leading the Aikiket over the head, for beginners such things are purely symbolic and usually rejected by modern students. They avoid everything they do not understand. I believe more technical preparation is required, which builds platform for better understanding in the future. So, hustle position and your command strikes are incorporated in Kumitachi I teach, rather than applied only over the head movements. Beginners now want to know what happens if, rather than initially accept the rituality of the practice. I think Aikiken is the tool to help us build our body structure and develop our movement and positioning skills firsthand. But in other fundamental aspects, I can say that my Aikiken practice complies with the principles and concepts offered by Saito Sensei. In general, there are no major differences in positioning and movements. I believe some things should be taught now and some things should be taught later. As to the fencing approach, it's just the tactical aspects which I believe have no fundamental importance to the Aikido values and goals. Uh, what I say here refers to the Seigan versus Gedan Kumitachi star. And of course, every teacher develops their own methodology helping beginners approach the discipline. It's not a question of what is better. Everything is relative. Uh, one method can be good for one generation, another method can be more appropriate for the perception of the next generation. I believe approaches can be different, but the core values must be preserved. Therefore, methods can be revised. I believe what I teach and how I teach is the best way to address to the perception of the current generation of people who are seeking self-development and who can find Aikido the best tool to progress in their search of the meaning, for the meaning of their lives and have the answers.